Meet Lila, a remarkable woman with big dreams. She has a loving husband, two adorable children, and a job that pays her well. But deep down, there was a persistent longing for something more, a business of her own. You see, Lila loves fashion and has a talent for curating unique collections. In fact, from a young age, she would spend hours flipping through fashion magazines and sketching her own designs. She even dreamed of owning a boutique when she grew up, but it only remained a dream as years went by because married life and motherhood came. And then her kids started grade school and because they now had a helper, she thought it was time to finally get her business started. So Lila thought that it would be easy because she loved fashion so much. She believed that her passion would automatically make her successful. But when Lila started her business, she soon realized it wasn't as simple as she thought. For example, she had to find nice clothes to sell on her online store. It was difficult to find reliable suppliers who had good quality clothes. She had to spend a lot of time searching to get the right clothes for her customers. And it was too late for her to realize that running a business involved more than just her passion for fashion. She would go home to her family feeling drained and exhausted from the demands of her day. The weight of stress and overwhelming responsibilities began to take a toll on Lila's health. When her husband found out about all of this, she told her to just drop it. After all, she still had a job to keep. Of course, she was no quitter. Lila was torn. What should I do? She kept on asking this question until she remembered that DTI-related event that she attended where I was one of the resource persons. So, long story short, she sent me an email. During our call, after listening to her problem, I told Lila this. I'm so sorry to hear that, Lila. But starting and building a business requires 100% commitment. And I understand, having to juggle difficult roles can be stressful and draining. Lila asked me, Mommy N, does it mean I should just quit like what my husband said? I said, well, if you do that, you'll wait again, right? Then I continued, you have already put in a lot of effort to stop now. If not now, when? Right? I believe it's better to do it now while you still have lots of energy instead of waiting for retirement. But how, Mommy N? How can I do everything as a homemaker, employee, and business owner? My answer was, well, here are three ways that can help you have a better work-life balance. If you're in the same boat as Lila, listen carefully, okay? Number one. Set realistic goals. You might have heard this again and again, but trust me, many don't actually do it. Here's how to do it. Break down large goals into smaller, achievable tasks that can be completed within a certain specific time frame. Then, focus on one problem at a time. Number two, prioritize self-care. As a business mentor and coach, my days are filled with lots of things to do, but I always make sure that I take time for myself each day. And lastly, number three, establish healthy boundaries. What does that mean, Mami N? Well, it means knowing what is acceptable and what is not. And it's important to talk about it and make sure those limits are followed. And those are the three ways that can help you have a better work-life balance. Yes, it's normal to feel rattled by the demands of everyday life. So remember to be kind to yourself and take things one step at a time. For Lila, her business is still a work in progress. But the good news is that she's now more focused and more composed. 